Every single year, the effects from the combine are felt on draft night. Last year, we saw Brandon Pajemski emerge as one of the biggest winners on his way to becoming the 17th pick to Golden State. The year before, it was Jalen Williams, who ended up going 12 to the Thunder. But examples like that aren't actually that common. Most of the combine's impact is felt by the second round or tail end of the first round. Oftentimes, a lot of the top prospects don't even come to the combine. The stock put into it is nothing like we see in other sports like the NFL. This year, however, things are a lot different. There is very little consensus regarding this class, which not only caused more top tier attendees at the combine, but also put a lot more pressure on the results than we typically see. Now, speaking of pressure, easily the most talked about combine attendee this year was none other than Bronny James, someone that just a year ago was truly being looked at as a first round prospect. In the very first mock from ESPN, they even had him going inside the top 10. But as we know, but as we all know, a lot's changed since then. Weeks after that mock, he would suffer a cardiac arrest, something that cast serious doubt on his basketball future. Luckily though, he was able to get back on the court and eventually made his college debut midway through the season with USC, where things really didn't go all that great. Over the course of this season, he averaged only 5 points and 2 assists, shooting 37% from the field. Under normal circumstances, that's not getting you an invite to the combine, not even close. But obviously, these are not normal circumstances. On top of his cardiac arrest having to be considered when it comes to that production, it's widely known Bronny's arrival to the league has major implications on what his father LeBron decides to do this summer. But even with that being the case, in order for Bronny to really be pushed up the draft board, he's got a lot to prove throughout this draft process. And early, things look like they're going in the right direction. He emerges from this combine as a winner. Now to kick off the week, it might not have seemed that way. Social media went crazy with the report that Bronny measured in at just six foot one and a half inches. This is compared to the listed height we saw from outlets like ESPN of six foot four. But while a lot of these reports were implying that this was some major surprise to scouts, it really wasn't. It's important to realize this measurement was without shoes. No one at the combine measured in taller than those listed heights we saw this past year. A vast majority saw a very, very similar disparity between their listed and official heights. Now that isn't to say that Bronny's size is ideal, especially for someone often being looked at as a two guard, but a lot of his other measurables were really solid. He measured in with a 6'7 wingspan and posted the 4th highest max vertical at over 40 inches. Then during the on-court activities, really held his own. He had the 2nd best on the move shooting score after knocking down 19 of his 25 attempts. Then came the scrimmages, where in his first appearance, things didn't go too great, only scoring 4 points going 2 for 8 from the field, but he turned things around in the second one as he took home player of the game after dropping 13 points in 23 minutes. Obviously nothing from this combine was jaw dropping when it comes to Bronny. But he is clearly a winner and it's mainly due to one thing, and it's the fact that he just didn't look out of place. He looked like he belonged there, which is big for someone that's been the focus of so much scrutiny leading up to draft night. The playoffs are really heating up right now, which already has me locked in, but to add just a little bit more excitement, I've also been sweating out some entries on Prize Picks, the sponsor for today's video. It's really as simple as it gets, you just pick more or less on different stats, and you can win up to 100 times your entry. Now sadly, there's not much time left in the NBA season, but luckily, PrizePix has squares from pretty much every sport or league you can imagine, such as the WNBA, which is making an appearance in today's entry. I'm going with Kelsey Plum to knock down more than two and a half threes. Then in the NBA game, I'm feeling more on Jason Tatum points and less on Halliburton. Let me know what you guys are going with, but if you haven't checked out PrizePix yet, if you click the link in the description and use the promo code JIMMER when you sign up, they're going to match your first deposit all the way up to $100. Thank you, PrizePix, for sponsoring. Now, someone who really should have been getting a lot of those headlines from the combine that Bronny was receiving is Providence guard Devin Carter, easily one, if not the biggest winner this year. This past year as a junior, he averaged 20 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals while shooting with really solid splits, 47% from the field and 38% from three. With those kind of numbers, unsurprisingly, we started to see him really fly up the draft board. Come the end of the season, he was consistently being mocked as a mid first round selection. But with what we've seen this week, by the time things are all said and done, we might be talking about a lottery selection. He measured in at six foot two and a quarter without shoes, just about what was expected. His wingspan, however, turned heads. 
as it measured in at 6 foot 8 and 3 quarters, which translates to a plus 6.5 wingspan, the second highest amongst any guard at this year's combine. Now what everyone was really excited to see from Carter was his results from the athletic testing. We already knew he was an insane athlete that had blistering speed, but he just put together one of the best combines we've ever seen. He tied for the highest max vertical at 42 inches. He tied for the highest standing vertical at 35 inches. He was third in the lane agility test. And the really exciting one, the three quarters court sprint time, which he finished in 2.87 seconds. Not just the fastest at the combine this year, the fastest ever recorded at the NBA combine. For some context, John Wall posted a 3.14. At least on paper, there's really nothing not to like here. He had elite production this past season. Despite not having crazy height, he's got great length and will legitimately come in as one of the best athletes in the entire league. With the draft often being portrayed as one of the weakest we've seen in quite a while, it really seems that overthinking Carter as a prospect could be a big mistake. Now as is the case every year, there are a lot less losers from the combine. Most of the time, in order to really emerge as a loser, it either takes a super surprising measurement or just failing to exceed expectations while others in the same range are. But I want to make things very, very clear. Just because someone's a loser from the combine specifically doesn't mean they're flying down the draft board. Oftentimes, being considered a loser can be due to things as simple as stepping on the scale, such as the case with Rob Dillingham. Dillingham's the best off the dribble scorer in this draft. He has a super fun, electrifying game that comes with a ton of upside. However, the concerns have always been blatantly obvious. He's small. In fact, he's smaller than even most thought. During the season, ESPN had him listed at 6 foot 3, 176 pounds. In reality, however, we now know he's actually only 6 foot 1, 164 pounds, a weight that would put him as the lightest player in the entire league. For some context, that's 30 pounds less than Kyrie Irving's listed 195, even 20 pounds lighter than 5'9 Isaiah Thomas. On top of that, he measured in with just a 6'3 wingspan. Now, it's not like anyone was expecting positive news to come out of Dillingham's measurements, but now having them officially on paper definitely doesn't help his case. But speaking of weight, scouts also didn't get great news when it comes to Colorado freshman Cody Williams. This past year, he was listed at 6'8", 190 pounds, but at the combine, measured in at only 6'6 six and a half, just 178 pounds. That's the third lowest recorded of all the positions. It's 22 pounds lighter than we saw Alabama guard Mark Sears weigh in at, who stands at just 5'10". Then we've got one of the favorites to be the number one overall pick, Alex Saar. Someone that didn't really have any red flags emerge from the combine, but also didn't stick out from the rest of the bigs like many expected. He posted elite measurables, 7 feet tall with a 7 foot 4 wingspan. But for someone whose draw as a prospect centered so much around his athleticism at that size, his athletic testing this week was pretty average. Even just amongst the bigs, he posted a middle of the pack sprint time, the 5th vertical, the 2nd worst shuttle run, and a middle of the pack lane agility score. Then when it came to the shooting drills, he once again posted numbers that were right around average amongst all the centers. Now again, no red flags emerged from any of these testing results. But this week, while he really did nothing to strengthen his case for the top pick, the other top contender, Zachary Rizage, was. He's still playing professionally in France right now, and just dropped a career-high 28 points, going 5 for 7 from 3-point range. A game that the Hawks actually had a heavy presence in attendance for. Their GM Landry Fields, assistant GM Kyle Korver, and head coach Quinn Snyder. Now to make things very clear, Sar is still the favorite to go number one overall, but based on what we're seeing from the odds makers, that lead is shrinking quickly. Another slight loser we have is Donovan Klingon. I really hate using that word when it comes to the combine, but it's the buzzword that everyone uses, so we're just gonna go with it. Now Klingon definitely had some positives to take away from this week. He shot 56% in the corner three drill. 63% in the off the dribble score, which was better than guys like Kyle Filipowski, Alex Saar, and PJ Hall, then shot 40% in the on the move drill. It was definitely promising to see from Klingon, but I highly doubt that scouts are under the impression that someone who shot less than 60% from the free throw line in his two college seasons has all of a sudden become a legit floor spacer. Those numbers are highly unlikely to move the needle very much for Klingon. So what really had him emerge as a loser is his athletic testing results something that everyone expected to be bad, 
but they're now official. He's still expected to go very early in this draft, but it isn't necessarily exciting to see him post the second to last agility score, the worst sprint time, and the third worst vertical. Our final loser is going to be Reed Shepard, someone being looked at as one if not the best shooter in this class after shooting a ridiculous over 52% from distance during his freshman year at Kentucky. But like his Wildcat backcourt partner Dillingham, the obvious concern for Shepard is his size, and we now officially know where that stacks up. He made headlines posting a 42 inch max vertical, which was tied for the highest. He clearly has elite vertical athleticism. However, the rest of his scores really weren't too exciting, especially when talking about someone being projected to go very early in this draft. It's really looking like he's going to have a lot less wiggle room from the point guard position than we initially expected. While he did post some okay times in the sprint and agility drills, he measured in at only 6 foot 1 and 3 quarters to go along with a 6 foot 3 wingspan which puts him right on the edge of being in that T-Rex arms category, along with the smallest hands. But now let's get back to some more positive stuff. I think it's impossible not to have Zach Eady as a winner. The biggest player in the draft is somehow still getting taller. Zach Eady actually attended last year's combine before returning to Purdue, where he measured in at seven foot three and a quarter inch without shoes. This year, he measured in at seven foot three and three quarters inch. Somehow at 22 years old, he's still growing. Now really, that's just more fascinating than it is impactful. What really had him emerge as a winner is the agility he displayed. Out of all the centers at the combine, he ended up posting the fourth best time in the lane agility drill, a higher score than the likes of Alex Saar and miles ahead of Donovan Klingon. He also posted the sixth best shuttle run of all the centers, once again, ahead of both Saar and Klingon. It's tough to say how much impact that's really going to have on his stock, but this combine definitely didn't hurt it. Then we've got Tennessee wing at Dalton Connect, someone I've made it very clear is not getting the respect he deserves as a prospect. He was legitimately one of the top players in all of college basketball, likely the top outside the center position, while also bringing an athletic profile we don't typically see from these older college standouts, something that this combine only made more clear. He measured in at 6 foot 5 and a quarter, along with a 6 foot 9 wingspan. He then posted the number one shuttle run time, the number two lane agility time, a really solid sprint time, and a 39 inch max vertical. Then in the shooting drills, he posted the second best corner shooting score and the third best on the move shooting score. So you've got someone that has very solid size, is an elite athlete, an elite shooter, and has the production to back it up. With teams like the Grizzlies at nine and the Thunder at 12, letting him fall too far really could be a huge mistake. Now there's a ton more players that we could have gone over, but these were the ones that really stuck out to me. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below.